Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy VI. We got lots of running around to do. Alright, so first things first. We're going to, uh... Hermes Sandals. Then we're going to go with the Hero Ring. Now we're going to want somebody else with the Hero Ring. You know what? We're going to want somebody else with the Hermes No, because he's going to have Cat Scratch. So yeah, we're going to give him, uh... Hyper Wrists. You will give the Hero Ring because you've got spells and things you can use. And you, my f my fine feathered friend, what do you want? I guess magic would be all right for you. Well, Hermes sandals, because we, because why not? Um, I guess an earring, because your stuff is kind of magical. I think. I'm pretty sure you can go into the back row. That's that. Okay, so first things first, we gotta go spend some money. We're gonna fly back to the Empire here. To the village of Tsen. So I guess we probably won't see the town of Miranda at all in the first world here. But this guy back here broke into the Magitek facility while we were causing explosions and things. So we're going to buy the Seraph Magicite. Okay, so now let's give some Magicite to people. Gal wants Seraph right away, because it's got Kira at a pretty high rate. Excellent. Gal already has a lot of good magic attacks with his rages. Give him a little bit of healing, he's good to go. Terra, we're going to give Modwin, so she learns the attack magic, uh, and gets the plus one level up, and it's just thematically appropriate. And good old Setzer, let's see here... What are some spells we're going to need to have in the second world? Because Setzer doesn't really care about magic or stats. So we can kind of do whatever we want with him. I think we're going to start him out with Vanish. Let's start him... Yeah, let's start him out with... Actually, you know what? Let's start him out with Catobleepus. Because that'll give him access to Bio for just some straight-up magic goodness. Now, I'm going to see if I can get into this shop. I'm not sure if we can do anything in this shop yet, but we're going to go try. So if we fly over here... Oh, wrong, wrong island. Wrong island entirely. Fly up over the veldt. There is a little... Uh, village right here <clears throat> the town of Famasa which should have some pretty good stuff for us magically inclined stuff yeah they won't sell to us right now though so we can't buy anything there eventually we'll reach a point in a plot where they will sell to us but right now they will not Rick Road why do you have a three person party you're making me sick don't worry, there is a method to my madness, dear viewer. So the, we have to actually see the path of the Leith River from the sky here, which is kind of cool. And if we just follow it north, we'll come out where... This is where Sabin woke up. And if we follow the other path of the Leith River the other direction, we come out over here by Narsh, which is our next stop. Both for story purposes and... Because this is the next place we're going to find treasure. So after all this time, Narsh is finally like, you know what? The Empire, probably a bad deal. So they've decided to fight with us. So we're going to put together a plan to attack the Empire. And this is where Terra comes in. The Empire, or the uh, Magitek... Um, get your terminology straight, Brick Road. Get, get a dictionary out. The espers we saw live in a different world beyond ours. And there's a literal, physical door between the two. The Empire has been trying to open it for a long time. 
has been failing the entire time, but... Apparently, people think Terra can bridge this gap. She can get the door open, make the Espers understand that we have a common foe, and if we can do all that... We'll have... Narsh's money, Figaro's machinery, and the Esper's magic to attack the Empire with, and hopefully unseat Guest Hall. That's something that we will definitely absolutely do in another video. For today, we've got some running around to do. We've already done all of, all of our shopping in Narsh, so there's nothing else to buy here that we really want. We might be able to eke out another point of attack power or something if we went to Sen and Miranda, but... There was a box in here that we could not open before. And here's a thief. Who's opening it for us. Lone Wolf the Pickpocket. Who can apparently jump directly through walls? Question mark? Okay. <clears throat> so we gotta chase this fool down. So we can get the treasure that is rightfully ours by... And, and really it's not. I mean, it's not ours, by any stretch of the imagination, if, <laughs> if we're being honest. It was there for the taking. He took it first. We just didn't like that he took it first. That's all. I mean, that's really it. Uh-oh. Did you see that little... What was that up in that cave? Up in that, up in that hole? Up in the wall up there? You can see something. Something's feet. Ominous! And ugly. Extremely, extremely ugly. So we can get to different places in the mines now that we were not able to go to before because physically we couldn't fit. We were wearing Magitek armor. Alright, so slot me up, fool. Most of what he gets are probably just going to be the, this weak healing Mycidian rabbit, so... Sensor's not a fantastic character yet. <laughs> And these enemies are so weak, they don't even give us APs, so we might as well just run from these fights, really. There's nothing to, There's nothing we can make happen here. And there's nothing, no treasure in the mines, you know, nothing really to do here. It's just cool that you get to see how extensive the mining complex in Narsh actually goes, because you've only seen... Uh, small parts of it before. Well, I mean, we saw large parts of it, actually. We saw quite a bit of it. When we came through the secret passage that Locke taught us about, found the Moogle village, there's the, the screen where the Moogles protected Terra at the beginning of the game. I guess they're mining iron, is the idea. These are iron mines. But then back out onto the snowfield here. Up into the hills of Narsh. <clears throat> The save point's gone, it just vanished. All the way up to where the Esper is, and he's like, okay, tell you what. One step closer, I kill the Moogle. So, don't make a move. The Moogle decides to get all uppity. And then we can only pick one. We can either pick the Moogle, or we can pick the Gold Hairpin. The Gold Hairpin's good. It reduces the magic points you use casting spells by half. But the Moogle is better. I mean, the Gold Hairpin is much more useful in other Final Fantasy games. In this game, so many characters have good magic attacks that don't use MP. That it's much less useful overall. So Espers can appear in dreams. So this is one explanation for why Terra... He just commits suicide. He's like, oh fine, you guys don't like you anyway. That's one explanation for why Terra turns traitor to the Empire. Like, maybe her father appeared to her in a dream. Do I have any teleport stones? Oh, I can't use it on this screen. I guess we have to walk all the way back out, don't we? Can we use one on this screen? We cannot. <laughs> Gotta walk all the way back out. Yeah, maybe Modwin came to her in a dream and told her of her Esper heritage or whatever. And she started rebelling against the Empire, and then Kefka put the kibosh on that. Okay, we're going to have to walk all the way out. I'm not going to bore you guys by checking the... Checking the inventory screen every single... 
screen transition. Why Rama decided on this one Moogle to help us and not something far more powerful, I don't know. But, Mog is one of those characters that has pretty good magic attacks that don't have to use MP. And more to the point, he's got good magic attacks that you kind of can't get by using black magic. He's got good wind and water attacks. And that's going to be the theme of this whole video, is getting access to some of those kind of esoteric elemental attacks. By the end of the video, we should have access to wind, water, and earth. If all goes well. And why wouldn't all go well? So I guess we're going to give Mog... Dragoon Boots and Hermes Sandals. Who's got my other pair of Hermes... Oh, Setzer's probably has them, right? Yeah, Setzer has them. So we'll give him Dragoon Boots and probably a Hyper Wrist. To make that jump attack good. Alright, come on, buddy. You're with us. Uh, so we still want Gao in the party. And Terra. And good old Setzer. And good old Mog. I thought Mog would just jump right in the party at Narsh. I guess he didn't, though. That's fine. It's fine that I'm wrong sometimes. So we're going to give him... Dragoon Boots, and we're going to give him... A hyper Wrists. Let's increase his strength. We'll put him in the back row. He can use a Mithril Spear. And, oh, I guess we should give him an Esper. What shall we give him? Let's see here. Strength plus two. You know what? Let's just go with Strength... For him because that jump attack is going to be his like bread and butter essentially so now we have to go out to the belt now I mentioned a big loop you have to do if you want to get access to this uh, this skill that we want here for Mog How you, you kind of have to retrace Sabin's entire steps for years and years and years I didn't realize I was doing the entire loop basically wrong Uh, first thing we're going to do, though, is fight one battle on the Velt. I think that'll teach Mog his dance. So, one of the each dance is tied to a different kind of terrain. For example, right now we're on grassy terrain. This counts as grassland. At least I hope it does. So when we win this fight, Mog will learn the dance associated with grassland. Right now the only dance he has is associated with caves. That's where we fought at the beginning of the game. He has another dance, one of his mo most powerful ones is the Water Dance, which we'll get. It's called uh, Water Serenade. And there's two ways to get it in the game, and they're both in the first world. If you don't get it in the first world, you don't get it at all. One way to get it is to ride through Serpent Trench. Have Mog fight in the Serpent Trench. The other way to get it is to go down the Leith River. Both of which are these like battle gauntlet places where you can't just jump in and have one fight, if you go in, you're in for the entire stay, basically. And both of them are one way. If you take the Leith River, you end up, it dumps you out at the beginning of Sabin's scenario. If you take the Serpent Trench, it dumps you out at the end of Sabin's scenario. So for the longest time, I thought, if you could do one of these places, you have to do both. There's no other way to do it. This time we can just take the left path all the way down the Serpent Trench, because we've already got the treasures out of here. So for years, I did the game that way. Because I'm not the smartest man in the world. So the reason Sabin can't kind of go in a circle, the reason we're going to be able to skip half of that journey is there's a bridge outside of Nikia uh, that's... Boom! Gigavolt. That's a tough spell, man. We might walk away with that this session. We'll see how it goes. Uh, there's a bridge they say is broken. There's an NPC in town that tells you, yeah, the bridge is broken. What's up? You start raging, you're going to heal him. You guys will keep doing what you're doing. And so it's broken in Sabin's scenario, but by this point in the game, it's fixed. If it was fixed in Sabin's scenario, he could literally take the bridge back down past Doma through the Phantom Forest over the Baron Falls, back to the Velt, and do that loop over and over again. And it might be worth doing, because the Asperians 
in this scene teach a rage that uses Gigavolt, which is a powerful thunder attack, and then the Angua forms teach a rage called Aqua Breath, which is a very powerful water attack. So if Saban could do that, it might actually be worth doing, because then Gao has a really powerful uh, magic attack to use for the Narsh Snowfields. But you can't, the bridge is out. So what we're going to be able to do is get to Nikia, because I used to take the ferry from Nikia, because I didn't know you could just walk back to the belt. Take the ferry to South Figaro, and then take the, uh, go through Mount Colts, go into the Leith River, take the Leith River back to the beginning of Saban's scenario, and for years I did this, and it was fine, because I would just put Mog in the party, and by the time Mog has been through all of these locations, he's gone through a mountain and a cave, uh, let's see if we can get a good slot here, yeah, that's good, that'll work. He's been through a mountain and a cave and underwater, and he's been across grassland, and you go through Phantom Forest, so you've been through a forest, and there's a desert you can, near Figaro, that you can grab real quick. So by the time you take Mog through all these places, he has his full complement of dances more, uh, dances, more or less. But it turns out there's only, most of the dances aren't worth using. So here's how the mechanics of dance work, because players, including myself, could be, uh, forgiven for thinking basically that dances were random. Like, you, Mog just dances and each dance has a bunch of random stuff that he does. And that's kind of how it works, uh, but it's slightly more complicated than that. I'm gonna hit an in real quick, because I know we took a bunch of Gigavolts while we were in there. So we're gonna pop this in real quick. So the dance kind of puts him in a berserk state for the fight, kind of like Rage does for Gao. Each dance has four abilities. Uh, if you use a dance different from the terrain you're currently on, his first attack might has like a 50% chance of failing. He stumbles over and does nothing. But after that, he changes the terrain to the type of his dance, and then each terrain type has four different abilities. One of which is the most common, has something like a 25, maybe a little more than that, maybe like a 40% chance of happening. And then the other three get progressively less common from there. As it happens, some of the dances just have... Here's the bridge that's just busted if you come through here. <coughs> so you can't use this chocobo on, in Sabin's journey. Uh, some of the dances, the grassland dance has wind slash, which is a wind attack that hits all monsters. The water attack... The water dance has El Nino, which is a water attack that hits all monsters. Both of which are very powerful. Both of which can be boosted by equipment. So the idea with dance, if you want to use dance really well, is find... You see, we're going to just choke about right through the Phantom Forest, skip the whole... I guess you can't get on the train again anyway, but yeah, just skip the whole thing. And back to the belt. The way we do. So the idea is to find a dance that has a powerful uh, attack in its first slot, which the, the Wind Slash is pretty good, El Nino is pretty good, and just use that. That's his most common ability. So it's kind of like the Gaia command from Final Fantasy V. Mog isn't really a dancer, he's a geomancer. And now we gotta do some fighting on the Velt. So I will see you guys after the speed up. went through the Velt list a couple of times. I didn't get everything I wanted, but I just don't have the patience to go through the whole Velt cycle again. Uh, so we got Templar, which will cast Fire 2, which is pretty good. We picked up uh, Anguiform, which is our Aqua Breath spell. That's a powerful water spell, which will get more powerful if we get Gao some more magic. And we got the Veil Dancer which I thought cast Thundara, but actually cast Blizzara. Either way, I mean, we get Gao and Ice ability now. I wanted to also do the Hill Gigas from uh, Vector, get Magnitude 8. Was not in the cards. 
But hey, you know, three out of four ain't exactly bad. So we just go ahead and park our ship over here. We'll go t make use of the, uh, the free refreshment. Poor Cyan. Will we ever get to use him again? The day will come, Cyan. Worry not. We'll put you in the party again someday, I promise. And we learned a few magic spells. I mean, we didn't go crazy with learning magic, but you do get AP on the Velt, so we got a couple of things here. Um, Gao himself got some healing magic. Terra is working on attack magic. Working on death. And you, my friend, I guess you can work on raise. Uh, Seraph has raise. But I think we'll just, eh, I don't know, what is... Strength, right? Let's do this, actually. Let's... Since you have the healing magic that we wanted you to have... You know what, let's leave him until he learns raise, and then we'll swip him... We'll swap he, him and Mog. That way Gao can start working on the strength... And Mog can get the rest of these healing spells, which will be useful in the long run. But for now, dear viewer, I leave you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Shoutouts to Frago Rock for sponsoring this video, and to everybody who helps make my channel possible by supporting me on Patreon.